I'm going to talk about uncertainty of dieting. Uh, so first of all, I have to recognize the territories we are certain about diet. If there is some, if certainty is possible, the territory we are less uncertain. In the territory, we should be uncertain. Uh, I'm certain that I love cheesecake, and my daughters, they love this cheesecake factory. I went with them then maybe 15 days ago. And uh, this is a piece of cheesecake, just a piece, you know, the one you take as a dessert. And how much calories do you think there is in this pie? How much calories? 1,200? Yes, that's it. No, I was amazed because uh, it, they show the calories there. And, and this spe specific one was this, just, just one, one piece, you know, one dessert. And it's very good. It's sugar, it's very good, it tastes very good. I'm able to eat two of this right now. And it would be, uh, yes, I, I'm kind of hungry now. I would, I, if I, I have the hungriness enough to eat two of this. So we have to, to be very careful with calories. You know, it's like this, the parachute paradigm. I don't need evidence that eating three of those a day is bad. I'm certain it's bad. I would be very obese. And it's like a clock. It's, it's very predictable that if we eat three of these a day, it's bad. So it's parachute uh, paradigm in evidence-based medicine. I want to do a trial giving this pies as an everyday thing and the placebo control thing and just to show this. I don't need. So uh, I think in terms of dieting, we have a quantity certainty that the quantity of calories are bad, you know? If you eat like 5,000 calories a day, it's bad idea. You're going to become obese, diabetic, you're going to die probably. <laughs> so we have certainty regarding this. It's parachute. But the question is in terms of quality, if we adjust for calories and quantity of food, the quality of food makes a difference. So the story of the low-fat diet is one example that a sin always brings that it was more like fantasy than fact. So for some reason, and it makes sense, it is coherent, uh, decades ago, the American Heart Association decided to propose low-fat diet as a way to control, uh, to prevent atherosclerotic disease. It makes sense. Because you, if you eat fat, you're going to have like high cholesterol. It, may, it, it is a risk factor. But if you think carefully, uh, high cholesterol doesn't come from diet. Most of cholesterol comes from endogenous production. And it's not proved that low-fat diet makes a difference. And it's not proved that a lot of recommendations of diet and specific things uh, makes a difference. So I'm certain that the quantity of food and the quantity of calories make a difference, but I should be uncertain and look at the evidence very careful in terms of the quality. Uh, and quality I mean uh, for low calories, if, if I vary the type of food, if it makes a difference. So let's, let's uh, uh, try to explore this. How certain is the quality paradigm of dieting? We suffer from this, illusions of the real world. When we observe the world, it provides us with a lot of noise. I call the signal to noise ratio. There is noise, there is signal, and we have to differentiate. Noise is the illusions, and there are a lot of bias when we observe the world. One of the most common bias is confusion bias. Uh, one study about dieting was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that tried to correlate chocolate consumption and Nobel Prizes. 
This is dieting, right? And it says that if you eat chocolate, you're going to get a Nobel Prize. And this is very well correlated, actually. Uh, the more chocolate, the more Nobel Prizes a country obtain. Brazil is here, we don't eat much chocolate, never got a Nobel Prize. And UK is here. Probably you eat a lot of chocolate and get named Nobel Prizes, you know. Sweden is here. So does chocolate provide a scientific success? Probably it's one of the examples of confusion effect. Because uh, the difference from UK and Brazil is not only the chocolate, it's many other things that may be contributing to the Nobel Prize. It's not the chocolate. Chocolate might be a marker of of scientific success. So it's like diet in many things, many situations. Uh, we may be doing something and uh, promoting uh, causation thinking, but it's not causation. You know, it's association. Not all association is causation. So uh, this is, is this published, it was published in Science in 1995. This uh, article, Epidemiology Faces Its Limits, and it claims that regarding diet, lifestyle, environmental factors, uh, we basically have only observational studies, mostly observational studies. And observational studies is like that of chocolate. We just compare somebody who does who do something with people who do, don't do, and we see the outcome. But people who have a certain type of diet is very different than the people who have another type of diet. So we should recognize that there's little certainty regarding lifestyle and diet, and the evidence is not so strong. Uh, one of the examples, and it was an article in my blog, the Spear study. It is a very large study, 100,000 patients in one study. It's impressive, the size of the study. It showed that actually uh, high carbohydrates in diet are worse than high fat diet. It suggests this. And it makes us think uh, and question if the paradigm of low fat diet is really a protective factor. And it's good for making us recognize this uncertainty. But it's not enough to say that low carbo diets will be better than other type of diet because this it is observational and people who eat a lot of carbo usually uh, in places of lower socioeconomic status have not such a good health care they are confusion factors so this study should not take be taken as evidence to drive our attitude but for evidence to provide uncertainty regarding the low-fat paradigm, but not provide certainty regarding the low carbo paradigm as a beneficial effect. This study published in Significance 2011 is very interesting. He got articles uh, about lifestyle, you know, low-fat diet, vitamin, hormone replacement therapy, selenium, things like that. And uh, all these studies published in JAMA, Circulation, Archives of Neuromedicine, were positive. It's 52 studies on this review. None of them were confirmed by a randomized clinical trial that was done afterwards. From the 52 studies, observational, that were positive, none were confirmed, and five of them was actually negative in the sense that the result was the opposite result to the observational trial. So when we are talking about lifestyle, in the observational way, there is a lot of uncertainty. We need to control, we need the control group, and we need that the control group will be equal to the experimental group to adjust for this. How can we have two groups equal, randomized? So we need randomized data. We have to look at this. This is amazing. This is a study, the largest study that randomized patients to a diabetic patients to a strict diet and exercise, both. And the other group, the control group, did as usual. 
So everybody thinks that exercise reduces cardiovascular risk. It's plausible. It is there in the observational studies. But it's amazing that when you randomize, there's no difference in cardiovascular events when you compare persons who did the intervention of lifestyle and those who did not do. And by randomizing, people will be equal, exactly equal. Even the calories, they, they try to balance. So it shows that the observation studies uh, about uh, exercise and things, uh, everybody think it reduces cardiovascular events, are confusion, confusion facts. And you and I this, uh, have this recent article, British Medical Journal 2013, Implausible Results of Human Nutrition Research. Definitive solutions won't come from another million of observational papers and small randomized trials. And he claims that in terms of nutrition, the level of evidence is very uh, low. Uh, you almost don't have randomized clinical trials. The ones you have is, are small. So uh, in terms of quality, we, we have to recognize uh, uncertainty. Actually, he has this, uh, this another study that says that even in observational trials, the type of the area of research that, ha that has the tiniest effects with effects minoris are in, in nutrition. Uh, he, he evaluated the uh, intervention with the tiniest effects. Nutrition is the field with the tiniest effects. So even if it is true, the effect is very small of a certain type of food or a certain type of exercise, things like this, if, even, if, even if it is true. There, the scandal uh, of uh, the Mediterranean diet. You know, it makes a lot of sense, the Mediterranean diet. And uh, in 2013, it was published in the circulation, the PREDMED trial. It was a randomized clinical trial, large trial. So thanks to God, there is now a good trial randomized for testing a specific diet, which is the Mediterranean diet. Uh, uh, with uh, certain types of good fat and olive oil and almonds and you know uh, things like this, a little bit of wine. Here is the Mediterranean diet, you know. And this study was positive. You see, the two groups of the Mediterranean diet reduced the composite endpoints in relation to the control diet. It was statistically significant, etc. <clears throat> At that, that point of the publication, 2013, we wrote this in the blog, 2013, because we read the article. You know, uh, it seemed actually too good to be true. A 30% relative risk reduction, 30% relative risk reduction, seems to be too good to be true to a type of diet that control for calories compared to a control group that uh, is also a pretty good diet. You know, I'm not comparing a good diet with a very bad diet. I'm comparing specific diet and both groups are kind of good diet. So I thought it was too good to be true. I became skeptical and I read the article carefully. And I saw two problems. First problem, it was interrupted earlier. The trial was interrupted, was truncated at a point where there was a lot of imprecision. And we know that trials that are interrupted before uh, it was originally planned to, f to finish, they suffer from a lot of imprecision. It may be false. It was interrupted earlier with fewer than 200 events. Second, there was a clear performance bias that the Mediterranean diet group had visits uh, every three months to the medical service, whatever, and the other group didn't have anything. So we don't know anymore if it's about the diet or the care that the patient received. So I wrote uh, at that time, in 2013, uh, it's not enough to be big and randomized. Uh, the first impression should not be uh, the one. Uh, the Mediterranean diet should be seen as a good way, a health lifestyle, but not as a treatment. We don't have this level of evidence. So it's good. It's a health lifestyle. We, we can adopt it. But we, I, I thought at that point that we could not say that it would be better than other diets. Now, last, this month, actually, there came the scandal. 
the this, this study was retracted because it became clear for some reason that a lot of patients were not really randomized. Randomized. In two centers, patients were invited. Like, uh, you randomize a patient, you invite his or her uh, partner to be in that group too because you're part of the family, you know? They did this. So uh, it was like, a, a, it generates a, a problem like this in the randomization is even worse than the problems that I saw because I couldn't figure out this. So it is like, it, it was, it, was, it is an evidence that it's very questionable, that effect. And I'm not saying it's not better than other things. I'm just saying we can say this, that it's better than other diets. But I didn't need to know that, what I know now of this scandal. Because I knew before, I could read the article before and detect those bias. And we can do that. We should be educated to be skeptical and to read the evidence. Uh, avoiding the confirmation bias of, of what we think. So, uh, regarding efficacy, and this concept is very important, you should understand what's efficacy. Efficacy is the scientific concept. The things that are there in the Mediterranean diet reduce uh, events compared to, to a traditional diet in a direct way. To assess efficacy, I need a randomized clinical trial. And uh, this is the proof of concept, okay? But, so there must be, we must recognize uncertainty in terms of quality of diet. And if you go to randomized clinical trials, for example, low carbohydrate versus uh, isoenergetic balanced diet, uh, randomized clinical trials that had the same calories in both groups couldn't say that the low carb diet, we cannot say it was not, uh, the, the systematic review was not actually uh, statistically significant, almost, but not actually, we cannot say that, uh, we can suspect, but we cannot say based on the totality of evidence that low carb diet reduces more weight than other type of diet if we control for energy, calories. So I'm talking about the quality of diet and not calories. So the, uh, we should recognize this uh, thing. And the conclusion was actually trials show weight of loss in short term, irrespective of the quality of diet. And this is one of Ioannidis' uh, studies, diet fits, he randomized to low fat or low carb. And the weight, uh, loss of weight was the same, you know, in, in both groups. So we, we can't say uh, that the quality paradigm uh, is proved in terms of losing weight, in terms of losing weight. So the quantity paradigm is the parachute, it's obvious, but in terms of quality, we don't know. But then there comes another concept. We, only, we have efficacy, but we have effectiveness. And you know that effectiveness is when you go to the real world. And what happens in the real world? In the real world, we have preference of the patient. In the clinical trial, you don't take preference into consideration because you randomize patients from one group or other group regardless of their desire. In the real world, you have the desire of the patient. So maybe if you take into account the desire of the patient, the quality of diet will make a lot of difference if the patient adapts better to that quality of diet. You know, so if, for example, uh, in the world, people adapt better to a low carb diet versus a low fat diet, the low carb diet will work better in the real world. So we need to ask, we need to uh, uh, understand that evidence-based medicine uh, is the practice of integrating external evidence, which is the efficacy data, clinical expertise, and patient preference. So if you give a diet and the patient likes that diet, it will work better than the other diet. So if the population adapts better or prefer the low carb diet, it will be more effective than the, the diet they don't. And for me personally, I can say 
that I like, I, I find very tasty sugar. And it's more difficult for me to have a health diet liberating sugar because I can't eat just a little bit, just, just a bite of that, of that uh, you know, cheesecake. It's impossible for me to eat just a bite. So I don't eat on a daily basis, not a bite. So I adapt better. And I keep wondering, what if people are like me? It's easier to do a low fat, uh, a low carb diet than a low fat diet. If it's true, people are like me, the low carb diet will be more effective. So in the scientific concept, I think it's the same. In the data show, it doesn't make much difference. But in the real world, we should ask uh, this. Uh, if we take into account preference, it affects effectiveness. That's the, that's the difference of efficacy and effectiveness. In the middle, there is preference, change in the thing. So we should uh, actually ask a scene, in the general population, what is the prevalence of people preferring a low carbo diet over a low calorie diet? So we don't need actually to prove it is different in the scientific concept. But we need data showing that if people prefer the low carb diet, adapts better in terms of, of a daily basis, it should be the one to be recommended first. It should be a shared decision making of diet. But you know that most people will adapt better to this one. It will, we, can prove, we can demonstrate in effective trials that uh, an outcome uh, research, effective trials, more observational, that it may make a difference in the real world. So I think the two concepts complement themselves. The efficacy, we should be at least uncertain regarding quality of diet, but in terms of effectiveness, if you are able to match the diet with patient preference, we are going to be probably more successful. So I think that's the my view of how to interact the scientific concept of patient's preference in terms of this. Thank you.